contractors um, have going on with the water plant then I'm going to go through just a few generic updates and I think we'll stay on the line through the presentation of the next item and then we'll um, either take off or stick around after that but go ahead Grant give them a rundown so the only contractor that I've really heard from lately this winter is uh, Tand and Angelo and I will be in Hazen next Wednesday to meet with Dave and go through the water treatment plant and then my understanding is they will start work on the water treatment plant and the rest of them will be coming in the spring. Perfect. Any questions? That, yeah, Here, so... Um, are we just going to get updates then on our regular meeting or are we going to start having then the weekly meetings? I guess I was thinking we probably wouldn't start having those weekly meetings maybe until we have more work going on. But if you think we should, maybe we should just do a call in for. So just one piece of TAN's contract is gutting the equipment at the treatment plant. And I think they'll get that done ahead of, you know, moving any equipment to town to do water main and things like that. So I'll. I'll leave that up to you guys, what, what you think. I'm comfortable waiting until spring. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. No need to start now. Let's see what has to do. Anything yeah. else? That's right. Uh, just quick, uh, you know, I, I've been talking to you somewhat about the SRF programs, just so everybody's in the loop. It's the beginning of the year, and the the health department has published their their intended use plan, which is like a ranking of their projects. They they are offering some communities loan forgiveness or grant money to get their projects done. At this point, it, it's kind of like their regular allocation of funds. And what we do expect is that additional communities will get offered. Um, sorry, you 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 are not one of those communities that got offered anything yet well what we have been hearing is that as they they're getting ARPA and COVID and dollars in that, that have the federal um, strings attached to them so there will be another round of, of loan forgiveness just to keep you in the loop or remind you you know on the water side we we've got meters that we've um, put on the priority list trying to get some loan forgiveness dollars for and then we've got some sewer lining 
that should be done that is on the list. These are all kind of wish list things. I don't think they're super critical, but if you do get offered some loan forgiveness, then you have to make some decisions at that point if something you want to do or not. But that's the only update as far as funding goes. Um, otherwise, I think we'll sit tight and wait for construction to start and um, I'll just listen in on the next item and stick around as long as you want. Okay. Thanks, guys. Anybody, any questions or for the graphic No. Okay. All right, 5B. Um, the Partners in Planning Grants scope of work with Brent Bogart. Brent's on the computer here. And, you know, this is uh, kind of a joint thing with HCD and the city. So, Brent, can you hear us? I can. Great. We can hear you loud and clear. Um, welcome to the meeting. Appreciate you being here with us. And um, why don't you give us a rundown of what we kind of talked about, you and I, and run through the other day, and then we'll, and Monty, and then we'll, you can fill us in on the rest of it as well, please. Yeah, so um, what you have in front of you is the Partners in Planning Grant is a uh, rough scope that we put together, started out in conversations with uh, Buster with HCD. Um, um, and it's working with the Department of Commerce in their Main Street initiative, the Partners in Planning Grant allows the communities to apply for grants for both comprehensive plans or economic uh, development strategic plans. And so we started that conversation on the economic development front. It led into the fact that the city of Hazen has not updated its comprehensive plan um, in about 12 years was the last plan that was completed. And so um, I reached out um, with direction from uh, Mayor and Monty to um, visit with Jared, which I did um, from more engineering because they are your engineers about working on a scope to combine the two efforts and see if we couldn't get a comp update the comprehensive plan and align the strategic plan for economic development to match with that. Um, so that's what we're proposing here. A couple of the time frames for this is. The grant application is due the end of January, and we would work with the um, city and with Buster to get that grant application submitted. Commerce does not um, award those grants until May, and so we would have some time then basically we'd just be waiting to see if the city and uh, the development corp receives that grant or not, and that from there that would be the go forward then. Um, we will work with you on getting that grant application, and that's really kind of just our assistance to the city. We're not going to bill for that until um, the grant is awarded. Um, this scope here that's in front of you, I haven't had a chance, I did not get a chance to update and get a new one sent to you. This was just the economic development side, so there would be a secondary piece to this. Um, then I'll work with Jared on his side in regards to the pieces of the comp plan and that review. So this, the bottom line on this isn't, um, it's probably going to be a little bit, well, um, unless Jared um, is feeling very benevolent, but the reality is, is that we're probably looking closer to a $40,000 plus scope to get the comprehensive plan updated as well as the strategic plan. And we can work with the city in regards to um, best ways to do that if, because if it's a partnership between the development corporation and the city, you know, do we have a scope with AE2S communications with the development corp and the city has a separate scope for um, more engineering, but then there, it's a collaborative effort. We can work on those details with you. Uh, Jared, or, yeah, Jared, are, are you feeling benevolent? <laughs> I probably can't do it for uh, zero. All right, okay, just want to double check. 
Brent, so tell us about the, the grant and what, what we'd be, you know, if you're talking about a $40,000 bottom line, the grant would possibly cover how much? Is there a kind of a range Is it I see 20, 35%? Yeah, so Hazen is a Main Street community. And so they're required to pay, um, have a 25% local cost share and you can receive a grant up to $25,000. So if you had a, if we got the full amount of 25,000, the city then would have to come up with, and the development co court come up with that differential of whatever that scope would be. Cause it, unless, cor and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't, I don't believe that Hazen is a Main Street champion community, but you are a Main Street community. Yeah, we're a champion. Yeah, we are. Yeah, I thought so too. Okay, if you're a champion, then the grant award is actually up to 30000 So what would you need from us, Brent, other than our blessing to move forward with you feel it all? The application. Do you need more information from Monty, or would, like you mentioned, Jared will have some of that for you as well? Yeah, what I will work with Buster and Monty on getting the application filled, helping get the application filled out. I'll set up some times with them. Really, it's um, at this point, um, it's it is like what you just said. It is a just your blessing for the staff to move forward with filling out this grant application. We'll work with them. I'll work with Jared to make sure that we get the scope defined, uh, so that we we know what our responsibilities are between the two of us, and uh, then we'll get that application in, and then we'll wait to see um, when we get that awarded. Okay. Buster, any comments? Nope, sounds like a good plan to me. All right, um, then for I'm, I'm entertaining the motion to to let them let Brent and Buster and Jared go forward and fill out the application. So motion by Jake, uh, half. Second, Killer. Second by Dan. <coughs> Discussion. So that on the grant money, then <coughs> even if we get, let's say. Uh, thirty thousand, and the project is only then. I guess, you know, I guess, you know, I guess, you know, I guess, uh, thirty-five thousand. So then, so then, all that, all that, I guess, we would need to pay then, just I guess, difference. Five thousand. Okay, the difference. Yeah. Okay, exactly. You heard? Did you hear that, Brent? Yeah. Yeah, and we're that's correct, right? Yeah, the up to uh, the thirty thousand um, dollar grant, it's twenty percent match, or up to six thousand dollars locally, and then obviously anything over that thirty thousand would also be um, the city or the development court's responsibility. Right. Okay. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Roll call. Pass. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Stern. Aye. Wall. Aye. Overhauer. Aye. Motion carried. Okay, thank you, Brent. Appreciate you being on here with us and uh, let us know what you need. Will do. And I'll. See you Thursday. I'll be out for the Vision West annual meeting. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, five. Uh, no, we're done. Five, six, eight. Three reduced rent for um, SMC hospitals. I had only put the one date in the notes, but they are requesting this again then as well for their grape escape and yeah, and the grape escape on April seventh and eighth. For seven on yeah. yeah. okay. Well, there's a fantastic fundraiser. And this is quite an organization that is doing an amazing job. Motion to approve. Motion by 
Wolf. Second. And second by half. Discussion. <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. All right. Um, that takes us on eight to Mr. Gowan, but that public hearing <coughs> isn't until six o'clock, so we need to we need to hold off on that. So we're going to jump over that right now and we move on to reports, <coughs> and, um, and then we can move back up to um, Mr. Gowan. So water sewer. Nothing to report at this time. Okay. Streets, cemetery. Uh, the only thing to report is, <coughs> excuse me, we're doing a little bit of extra scraping on the roads now that it's getting nicer. Um, <coughs> I haven't had a chance to talk to Dave, but um, I noticed some, not big pooling, but just kind of keep an eye on our, on our gutters if there's any ice buildup for water flow. Um, not a ton yet. Um, and then just a couple little minor uh, things to uh, check on in the other communities. So. I know it's today when I came up by Senex, they're about an eight foot wide pool of water sitting there. Seems like it's always, that's always an issue right there, and across on the west side of that intersection as well. I don't want to snap for two for two. The ground has got to run like so many blocks or whatever. It does. It's yeah. Yeah. Range, so yeah. That's usually a problem this maybe, time of year. Maybe by the Senate there, because that's pretty close. Senate that close, we can probably chisel on that run and get it to the drain. Okay. That'd be great. Actually, I even kind of went around it a little bit because I don't want my breaks full of water and ice and so I, I, I actually went around and said that was pretty bigger than normal. Street Super came Thursday? Yeah. We run around the community yet? <laughs> no, we got it in there cleaning it up, yeah. checking it out, so everything. There will be a couple of, couple of maintenance items we'll need to do on it and we expect it to after. Like yeah. It's a used machine, but yeah. as so far it's checking out really well. Fantastic. Yeah. Glad to. By the library. Oh, let me think. Okay. Police, fire, forestry. I have nothing today. Buster. Oh, and you heard, uh, you heard a friend mention that our region, the big last annual meeting is, is Thursday here at City Hall, so you guys are all. Invited to attend. If you're going to attend, and you have an RSVP, um, do so because we can probably get a head count for lunch. But uh, we've got uh, Rockford Electric is sponsoring the morning pastries, and then uh, Sakaku Medical Center is sponsoring the new luncheon. And uh, we're kind of uh, you know, uh, working on it together, Antoinette and I, and uh, the hospital folks. Uh, program is put together. Uh, it's going to be probably a fairly heavy dose of energy. Uh, a lot of different folks coming into town to talk about, to give a short spiel on their expertise in certain areas. So, so yeah, you're, you're certainly welcome to. The mayor is giving the welcome. So our president, our president. <coughs> so, yeah. Is that it? Oh, yeah. Thanks, Buster. Uh, let's see. Tomorrow morning, uh, 10 o'clock, I'll be attending the meeting with uh, Coal Country at Scarfley Medical Center, the partners. Um, the survey they did that they had just got results back, and they're going to be going through over those tomorrow with the the group. I uh, sent it to Monty and we'll try at the next meeting to get more information out. And, and I even sent it to Brent because there might be some stuff um, that could tie in with what they're what he's doing. But it was a pretty comprehensive um, survey about our health service needs. Not not necessarily our 
community, but more more with uh, health services. And it's uh, I think there were about 175 Hayden Avila people and Stanton people that um, filled out the survey. But um, did you you haven't forwarded it to anybody? No, okay. I'll buy the report as you guys. You guys know if you're over and you can test it the next next. So that's tomorrow morning at 10 and at 11 o'clock. I'm sitting with the District 33 Executive Committee, which I'm on um, for the Republican Committee, and we're we'll be at uh, having coffee with um, Mr. Holman tomorrow morning. Um, I'm sure it's, it'll be just a one-sided talk. Um, so as usual. But it's uh, interesting that he's coming to town to visit and give us an update on what the Washington, D.C. is thinking about energy. And I'm sure we can ask him some questions, but that will be tomorrow morning. Dan, are you going to be there for that? Just even aware of it. That's a, well, you are now. Mm -hmm. That's the country kettle deal in the back room. Yeah. 11 o'clock. All right, uh, that's all I have. Um, so let's take this down to 10A, um, planning for future publication. Monty, what do you, what do you know about that? As I said in my notes, uh, they were on a short time frame, so I did prove that the cost is $153 or 155 and uh, that will be in this week's, in addition to this week's paper. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, let's go down to approval of the bills. Any questions on the bills? There's a couple more on the table here. Okay. One for the paper. Yeah. Came in less than the estimates, so. Yeah. What ended up being the corporate freight bill for transportation bill? 1800. Or the 1800, that means 40. And that's it, okay. Oh, right here. Motion to approve. Motion by Wolf. Second. Second is fair discussion. Roll call. Wolf. Aye. Stern. Aye. Hack. Aye. Taylor. Aye. 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 Motion carried. The other thing I forgot to mention on my uh, privilege report is I did get an email. Uh, I got an email from Keith Bain. Keith, uh, his family owns the. Uh, Truck stop just west of uh, Mandan on the interstate, and he is he, he uh, emailed me saying he's announcing his candidacy tomorrow. Uh, he's going to be running for uh, Republican Senate seat for District 33, so he'll be running against uh, Jessica under the belt. I don't. Uh, he did call me today and we had a brief conversation. But I don't know him, and he was getting a hold of all the executive. Committee members just to introduce himself and explain that. I think it's going to be out of a press release tomorrow, I think, in the Tribune. Okay. Um, so we uh, we have our public hearing at 6 o'clock. Um, so we do need to wait until then, correct, Pat? Correct. <laughs> no? The right time is actually 5.54. 5, 5, oh. We could go by that clock and that clock, <laughs> and not that one. <laughs> well, I'm going to wait so that he may, Randy Christian may be coming as well. Oh. He did call me today and had some questions and concerns. Did he talk to you at all? No. Okay. So at this time, let's recess the um, regular meeting, uh, and we will reconvene in about five minutes for the public hearing for the uh, for Mr. Gowan's property.
call the uh, public hearing to order for the moving permit for Mr. Gowan's property. Uh, at this time, we will take the public comment in, um, opposed or in favor of, of this uh, moving permit. Any comments? Opposed. Mr. Cannell, anything other than that? When you say that, I don't know why. Well, I, don't, I, I don't know why. So if I'm going to vote, I don't know why I would support us. I've got enough problems keeping that road open the way it is. Yeah. And with the snow blowing in the corners and whatever else it is, and then trying to get the county to maintain my road even in the summertime is an act of Congress. It's all, it's all the way. I mean, which his building probably would have nothing to do with the summer, but um, in the winter, mm -hmm. Nuts. So it even fills in on the on the west side of that road, in, the inside of that curve is close to yes. the east yes. side of that road. Yes. Sure. Can I have? Uh, Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I want to remind everyone that thank you for letting me show up here at this hearing, but uh, I. Uh, that's what I do is move snow. Seems to me I'm doing a lot of it now. But I would uh, uh, fill in on that section of road for where the county perhaps doesn't go in there. I, but I know you can ask the county to come in there if you want. The county don't come in there at all. But I, I do. In the winter. But I, I do. Go. Uh, I've, uh, I've been cleaning my road up to the uh, where I had that little ranch at there. And I certainly wouldn't fall down on the job uh, if it was causing a problem. And uh, I would even open up the road where those trees are on the curve there that are still there. And uh, if you were concerned about that, you could cut those trees down. That would be fine with me. But uh, just, just to assure you that uh, I'm a pretty good neighbor, and I'll, uh, I'll do my share of keeping the road open for snow, if that is an issue. That is an issue, yes. It is. This year, no. Three, four years, about five years ago, yes. I was just going to ask you, Brent, what it's like have, now. We had yeah, Bob Mettler come out with a snowblower, and we had that chute sitting almost straight up, and that, and that one bank was as high as his bobcat would go. So. I buried my Chevy in the road just up before that corner, so yeah, she blows in there, get it. The corner included. There's two sites, site one and site two. Did you get a chance to see those little signs? I just seen the one in the corner, is all I've seen. Oh, there, there's one exactly diagonal from that one there that is closer to uh, Antelope Drive Bridge. And uh, it's also closer to a transformer. So, uh, that's the one that's just, Monty's got his cursor there. That's, that's the second one. You were talking this area? Yeah, that, that elevation right there is actually a little bit higher than the. Uh, This elevation right right on this corner here is a little bit higher than uh, this one over here. And uh, for me, uh, the idea is to get shelter across the creek, not not necessarily over there. And if that causes a problem, well, we just won't go there. Uh, so uh, uh, unfortunately, you can't cross the creek here. We can think about it in low water. But uh, it's still not very advised to try to run livestock across there. But uh, here you'd have to bring them around by the road and then put them in here, and then they'd be good for a little while on the other side there. But it's a, such a small amount that uh, you're going to have to watch that the livestock there daily. So, uh, and as I indicated at our last meeting, I don't like that spot there because of. It could blow the fill in on the road right there on the intersection. I would be 
that'd be my, especially if the Northwest found the win, that, that'd be the power. I think Dave, you'd probably agree but that that corner, that intersection would hang it up the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. But here is the big problem, right? <coughs> Right here where this bunch of trees here, and uh, you could certainly uh, make an arrangement here to cut those trees down because they serve no purpose for beauty or whatever you want to have up there. But uh, there's quite a bit of snow that blows across over there too, I would imagine. So, but otherwise, that's pretty good road. You got it all turnpiked and everything. So. Any other comments from the public? Okay, at this time we'll close the public hearing and we will reopen our regular regular meeting and move back to uh, the moving permit for Mr. Gowan uh, on under 8A. Any comments or questions from the board? Yes, so I guess even if you were to build a something new, would he still need? <coughs> well, I guess mm. you want the board approval then? Not necessarily. I mean, it is within our extraterritorial zoning jurisdiction, but in this in the past. The building permit, that's all. If you need the setbacks. That's so, yeah, it would come to the board again anyway for construction and we need everything. On the setbacks, is that why? Or <clears throat> yeah, basically make sure it's in compliance with the setbacks and stuff. Yeah. And this building that is looking at moving would be in compliance with setbacks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Remind us, Mr. Gowan, what you're going to do to the building, to this building here. <coughs> this building if here. If it gets moved in there. It's going to sit uh, so that this side is facing to the south. Just kind of like the way it is here, and on the back side over here would be uh, a place to keep hay. There's also a place inside to keep hay and feed should they be trapped over there, and uh, there'd be a little row of feed bunks here. So, other than resizing it to look like a little log cabin, if you will, uh, not much is going to be done to it. I don't believe there's going to be no opportunity in there for electricity or water. So uh, it's just uh, a fairly neat building to put in that spot so it doesn't become an eyesore. I, I hate eyesores. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? <clears throat> so I guess the way that I kind of view this is, I mean, this is just the moving permit. Mm -hmm. So, so even if you were to build new, it's still going to be the same spot that he wants it. I'm assuming. So, since since the new setbacks, but if you were to build new there, Mr. Gowan, did you build on the same exact site? <coughs> it. Uh, it's got the elevation to build there, and it's uh, uh, the the creek right there will not erode the bank there, and it has easy access via their road. But uh, access and neighbors uh, are a different thing. I don't want to do anything to offend any neighbor, and so uh, I won't be pushing anything on anybody. So it'll be a, a an agreement. That's the way I, I operate. So, uh, so even if we agree to put it there, uh, it'll be in uh, cooperation with 
the neighbors that are objecting to it. Mr. Gowen, would it be possible to to place that even a little bit further to the east, or, or does that get it to where it would be starting to go down the decline into the creek? He's asking, um, would it be possible to move it toward to the east at all? Uh, no, not not in that particular spot. Uh, however, you can go to site number two there. That's this one uh, with no objection whatsoever. That's also easy access uh, right here uh, to Antelope Drive. There's, a, there's an approach right here already, and uh, this would require less, less controversy if you want to. Uh, there's also a transformer on this pole that's right here, so you can bring electricity quite readily down to that valley if you want lights. But yeah, if, if this at this point here, uh, I believe, if, uh, of course, you know, I can put this building on skids and move it in the winter time. But it, we don't want to set it up that way. We want everybody to be happy with it from the get-go. So if I were to build new, I'd put a little structure uh, right here. Okay. You know. Can you go any further north? Mike, would you move the cursor to where Mr. Gowen is referring to? Okay, up there. Yeah. You, mean, you mean up there? Correct. Yes. yes, you can go within 40 feet of the power line that goes there. So I could go uh, almost 100 feet further north and get it away from that curb. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. 100 feet, you're going to be right, in, right over top of my fence. Well, what if you went, what if you went 50 or 75 feet further north? But would that be better for a um, snow blockage on your road? It doesn't matter much. If you're against it, I won't do it. <laughs> Any more comments or questions? Okay. Um, at this time, roll call. No, we need a we need a motion before a vote. So moved. Okay. Motion by Wolf. Second. Second, Mr. Discussion. Roll call. No. No. Sir. No. Hack. No. Taylor. No. Over an hour. Yes. Motion failed. Uh, so at this time, uh, the moving committee has been not approved, so um, there, should be, there should be some kind of reasoning involved here, I think. There should be some explanation. It's hard to justify one way or another unless there's some, you know, there has to be some substance to that. If you're going to do it because of uh, location, if you're doing it because of... Uh, well, I didn't vote. I voted no, not because of the snow, because snow can be removed. And, and we didn't put up a building whenever there was going to be a snow problem. We wouldn't have a city. Um, I, just, I don't like the location of it. I, I, I'm opposed to, 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 you know, if it was moved so there, you know, or even on the bottom half, I'd be more with it on the bottom half. <coughs> I'm, I don't want to work. Okay. That's what we need. Yes. Okay. Some sort of. Okay. Anybody yeah. else want to offer their opinion on why we. We normally don't give opinion when we vote uh, for or against items, but. Well, yes, I think you do. Usually in your discussion, you do. Okay. Okay. That's true. But there was no discussion. <laughs> I would, I would ask here, are you voting for both sites one and two, or just site two over there by the curb of the road? I think this was, well, this is a moving permit, and I was, 
I thought it was for that site. That's why I was on the impression. It was for the, the, for the further north site. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I gave an option. You know, the option is the, the site closer to Antelope Drive. So you could approve it for there and not for the other one. You could make that very plain. We could. If that was a, you're, you're right. Just move to approve the moving permit for location number two. Yeah. Okay, so as you point out, where that location, Mr. Gowan, okay, that location right there. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Dan, that's the spot that's further south on the. Yep. By the intersection. Okay, we have a motion by Stern. I will second. And a second by Wolf. Can we vote on this? Were both sites listed on the moving permit? I mean, can you randomly pick spots and change it? He did talk about both spots at the last meeting. He talked about it, but are they on the permit? Don't you have to, like, Show it on the permit where you are. The only thing on the permit specifically says northwest of Antelope Drive yeah. Bridge. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, right. Good question, Nancy. Uh, we have a motion and a second. We're discussing. How many acres is that, Steve, on the outside of Antelope Creek? How many what? Acres. <coughs> Probably about one. Because since I've lived here in the ten years, acres, sixteen and a half feet wide, and a half mile long. Yep, I've seen two horses on the inside. Yeah, and nothing else since I lived there. They were up against <coughs> it as well. Yeah. Okay. And you wouldn't be able to put much more than one or two head of cows in there. Well, no, you'd, you'd have to just keep them in there by a week or it's two, not, and yeah. then move them back out of there. Yeah. It's it's labor intensive. Right. So my my point is is it I know what you're trying to do, but is it worth doing that for a week at a time? For I'm not sure. sure. Yeah, it's a hobby, you know. <clears throat> right. That's I guess not our concern. Is it worth it or not? Right. Any more discussion? The motion and a second. Monty, roll call. Stern. Aye. Wolf. Aye. Hack. No. Heller. Aye. Woman hour. No. Motion failed. And I voted no because I said no I said no two weeks ago about that location and I said no tonight. You got three eyes. You got three eyes? Yeah. yeah. And two no's. And two no's. Okay. Motion passed. <laughs> Doesn't matter what I think. <laughs> And that was that was my the group spoke. My uh, I, I, I promise you it won't be an eyesore. That's the best <coughs> you know. Whether critters are gonna use it. I I I I don't think it'll be an eyesore. I, I believe you, Mr. Gowan. Yeah. I just don't want that to be a snow hazard, that's all. Right now it's a little of a bird watching station. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, we already had our approval of bills. So, unless there's anything else you guys can think of, meeting adjourned. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Dan. Thank you.